Hello, everybody. My name is Jackson. And today we're going to be talking about neural networks and deep learning. Um, so neural networks, deep learning, they're kind of trendy topics in the um, uh, computer engineering community right now. Uh, who's heard of neural networks or deep learning before? Um, quite a few of you. And what kind of implementations have those things um, had? Like, what do you think of when you hear them? Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Machine learning. Machine learning. Um, yeah, so definitely both those things. You might be picturing something kind of like this. You've got your computerized brain. It's very complicated um, learning about things. But a neural network is actually a very simple sort of data structure um, and can be modeled with something like, like this. You have an input layer where data is received by the neural network, um, a number of hidden layers where some augmentation is happening, and finally, an output layer where the neural network um, gives the output of the data it's received. Now, a um, kind of conventional application of neural networks are, um, so what are they, sorry. Um, a type of machine learning modeled after the human brain. Um, they're made up of many nodes, thousands or maybe even millions of highly interconnected nodes, each of which is performing a simple process. And we'll get to what that process is in just a little bit. But um, first, that example I was kind of leading into. Um, so image recognition is a great example of what a neural network can accomplish. Um, or, uh, image recognition being simply a computer looking at an image of a frog saying, yeah, that's an image of a frog. Um, but the machine, or the neural network, needed to learn how to do that. Um, and so a limit of good neural networks is kind of what data is already out there. Um, image recognition, for instance, requires a library, um, a couple thousands of images, um, in this case of frogs labeled by humans as frogs and not frogs, to train the neural network because neural ne networks will start off as being relatively dumb or untrained. And so the program will adjust how these nodes are functioning um, until it can correctly identify more and more of the example images. Um, in a similar way to how a genetic algorithm works, um, it knows when it reaches a success and it's going to kind of randomly modify its, um, the function of the nodes until successes happen more and more, uh, until basically all the time, unless you have a very weird looking frog. Um, so this is what a very simple neural network might look like, and we're going to go over kind of how it's working. Um, it's built in layers. Uh, we receive input in the input layer, and this um, kind of data flows from the input layer towards the output layer, usually never in the opposite direction. Um, nodes will do a computation based on the data they receive and a weight that the nodes have. Um, if that computation, which is just uh, multiplying the values, um, they actually will multiply each value they receive with the weight they have. Um, and if that reaches the threshold, they will then send that value out to the, the next layer in the neural network, uh, kind of similarly to how a neuron, if it reaches a certain amount of stimulation, will fire. But if it doesn't reach that level, will not fire. Um, it is feed forward, and it starts um, the beginning of its life as being untrained um, and will randomly, or um, not randomly, it will make its way towards being trained after going through that library of images. Um, Walter Pitts and Warren McCullen were researchers at Univers University of Chicago, and they were the first people to develop this idea of a neural network, um, a way for machines to kind of behave like a brain. Um, they didn't implement one, however. That came along later with the Perceptron and Frank Rosenblatt in 1957. Um, this was the first trainable neural network, but it was only one layer. Uh, we see this kind of massive machine over here. Um, not the most feasible thing. And actually, just a couple years later, a professor at MIT was saying that neural networks, uh, they, they aren't feasible. We only can do so many computations with one layer. Um, neural networks kind of resurged again in the 1980s. Um, when we were able to build them uh, multi-layered. Um, that's kind of when the first image recognition stuff started to be developed. Um, but there has been a resurgence in neural networks recently. Um, any ideas what that's attributed to? Yeah. So definitely helpful. Uh, cool anecdote relating to that. Um, who's used Google Translate before? So many of you guys, if you remember maybe like 10 or so years back, 
Uh, Google Translate wasn't very good. Um, but if you use it today, it, it is quite good at just about every language. What happened was the people at Google got, Google got their hands on um, translations and records from the UN. Um, all kind of conversations, official ones, happen and are translated into many different languages. Um, and basically, overnight, through a neural network, um, the Google Translate was able to learn uh, all these different languages from those documents. Um, but what really is kind of cool today, um, today's neural networks, come from uh, modern day video games and their graphics processing units, the GPU. Um, these GPUs are very similar to advanced neural networks. Um, thousands of simple kind of images happening in game, um, all contained in a single chip. Some of these chips have up to 50 layers of nodes um, and that length, or I guess depth, the 50 layers is why it's called deep learning. Um, so this is kind of what got my interest in neural networks. And here we can see a variety of them. Um, and I have a couple videos to show you uh, that kind of highlight what I think is really cool about neural networks. So the first one is this example of a neural network that is trying to drive a car through a maze. Um, we're going to start it off here. The first couple generations, the car doesn't really know what to do as it encounters this turn. Um, we see a neural network in the upper right corner and it has a turn left and turn right. And the random values are being um, kind of mutated through generations. Uh, we see we're on generation six right now. And it's selecting for um, neural networks that let the car get farther and farther and farther into the maze. We see we're already kind of making it around those first couple of turns. Fast forward towards the end, uh, generation 14, the car is getting very close to the end of the maze. And even farther, um, generation 46, uh, not only does just one car make it, but we can see that uh, in just a second, many of the cars will make it all the way through the end of the maze. And that happened uh, with just a neural network, no other information about how to drive a car for that machine. I think even cooler than that, um, someone built a neural network to play uh, Mario. The first um, example here in the video is of a, the completed neural, neural network. But if we fast forward to around, let's see, earlier on in the video, maybe, <laughs> Mario starts off just standing there. The neural network doesn't even know that moving right will cause Mario to get farther in the level. Uh, fitness is measured by how far he's able to go. And so once they do figure out that moving right uh, is a good thing, the neural, neural networks will continue to do that. This neural network, as we see it get built out um, here in kind of the upper part of the screen, isn't that deep. Um, it doesn't have that many layers. What it does have is a variety of inputs. It's reading the map right here. Uh, and that grid is giving different information, which will fire to um, what comes across as certain button presses. So neural networks seem like a very powerful tool. I am excited to try and implement one um, at some point. Uh, what do you guys think like the, the future of neural networks might be? Or like what you'd want to try to implement? Is anyone excited about them, maybe? Maybe. OK, cool. Um, just going to kind of finish off. So neural networks are very exciting. But as they get closer and closer to being as powerful as the human brain, um, just like a quote from like Elon Musk, uh, not verbatim, uh, we need to be worried that once a computer can do all the computations that a human brain can, they'll do those in kind of a matter of computer time and then just explode after that. And so we have to like watch out for things like the matrix or all that good stuff. But thank you for listening to my talk. Hopefully uh, you're excited about neural networks and you learned something.